Greetings, my friends. Reform Stoic here. Today, with an important message, maybe the most important message that I've taught on my channel. I'm going to go over New Age a little bit. Again, I believe I've brushed over this a little bit in the video I made on The Chosen Ones. Um, not the show, The Chosen Ones. Um, the movement on YouTube, the hashtag. We're going to go over some of these concepts like karma, which in the Bible, you find something about sowing and reaping, reaping what one sows, which seems to be very similar, if not nearly identical to karma. And then we also have the law of attraction, which we're going to go over where in Mark eleven twenty four, Christ talks about believing that you have received whatever you have asked for. And then the power of positivity, which is not as iconic of a term as law of attraction or karma, but um, this is something that is also championed in New Age, and it's something that is also biblical. So I'm going to come at you with an absolute onslaught of scripture, and then, and then we're going to talk about this little tweak of New Age that has taken these very important Christ-centered biblical teachings and has just manipulated them a little bit to derail you and send you off into the New Age. So let's begin. We're going to start with Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So, sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life and he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption so now we go over to galatians 5 19 through 23 where we get more details on flesh versus the spirit galatians 5 19 through 23 now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So I would not reduce these teachings to karma. This is much more complex than karma. I believe that karma is like a piece taken out of these teachings from Galatians 6, 7 through 9 on sowing and reaping. One will reap what he sows. And then elaborating on fruits of the flesh versus fruits of the spirit. So if you sow into the world actions from the spirit, you will reap that. It's like you're planting into the soil of your life, of your experience here on earth, either good things or bad things, and you will reap what you sow. Okay, so... The teaching of karma, I'm not going to go and break down the teaching of karma. Things in New Age are definitely just reduced to very simple concepts. What goes around comes around. What you reap, you will sow. So I'm not going to say that karma is biblical, but karma is like a simplification of something that is biblical. So it's important that when you're looking at some of these things that New Agers take, uh, teach that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, one would say. 
So the law of reaping and sowing, very important. I feel like you can benefit from reading these sections every day. One more time, that's Galatians 6, 7 through 9 and Galatians 5, 19 through 23. What you reap, you will sow. You shall sow things of the spirit to reap them, not sow things of the flesh because those who do these things of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. I hope I've made that clear. Moving on now to the law of attraction. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Okay. So now it's important to break down these differences here. The law of attraction is the idea that when you visualize things, you visualize yourself having something that you will attain it. And then they say that if you're not getting what you want or you're only having bad things, it's because you're too focused on the negative. You're not focusing on the positive. You're not focusing on things that you can manifest in your life. Now, this is a very dangerous deformity of Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So you don't just believe that you're going to get things. You don't just visualize what you want. You ask God for what you want. And then you believe that you have received it. You believe that God will provide. This is the real teaching of Christ. Okay, so so far we've gone over karma versus you will reap what you sow and law of attraction versus Mark eleven twenty four. 24, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. So we're getting to the bottom of some of these new age teachings. Now the rest of these passages are all honing in on the power of positivity. I don't know if this could really be considered like a new age concept. This is just why positivity is so powerful and important. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, especially today since I listened to Reform Stoic Radio, where I had these um, these positive affirmation tracks mixed in with the original rap songs that I had made. And I thought it was fascinating how, wow, it's you just say some positive affirmations over a beat, and I really just about feel like it merits being a song. I mean, some of those tracks were arguably better than some of the rap songs I made. Not not all of the rap music that I posted there is stuff that I'm proud of. Anyway, I digress. Now, I say the power of positivity doesn't sound like a new age term, but positive affirmations does. Now, people will say that positive affirmations are dangerous. I would say it's all about your understanding Saying positive things, sowing these positive things, just staying focused on positivity. It's such a powerful thing, and I think it's so important to know this distinction. What it really comes down to is back to the law of attraction. Thinking that you are your own God, and you, out of your power, are manifesting positivity into the universe, that is heretical. That is dangerous. That is bad. Let's just break it down biblically. Let's explain it with scripture here. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Incredible wisdom here. You should not be anxious. This is Christ telling you not to be anxious. So I know it's easier said than done, but there are a lot of wise men in the past who have broken down how worrying about the future, just as it's broken down here by Christ, Worrying about what shall we eat, what shall we drink. This is quite literally 
according to Christ, what causes anxiety, worrying about the future. And he tells you, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Because before that, he says that your heavenly father knows that you need these things. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Okay, so that's getting anxiety out of your way to make room for the positivity you're going to fill your life up with. Here we go. Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Rejoice. You need to be somebody who's pleasant to be around. You need to be uplifting. Rejoice. Positivity. Very simple stuff. We are all very perceptive in this way. If somebody's negative, you don't want to be around them. If somebody's positive, they got good vibes. They got good energy. Okay? This is really simple stuff here. Let's just keep going. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Maintaining positivity through hard times, through trials and tribulations, okay? Unwavering joy, positivity, gratefulness, thankfulness, power of positivity, guys. Christ-centered positivity. Reap what you sow. Okay, we all know the golden rule. And then ask for things and believe that you have received them. So this is the real teachings from Christ. It's very similar. Can you see? I hope you can see how it's very similar to the new age. We only got two more sections here and then we're going to and then we're going to wrap it up. 1st Thessalonians 5 15 through 18. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Unwavering positivity, see that no one repays any evil for evil. Last one. Matthew 5, 5 through 12. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So when you have this like Eastern stereotype of the person who is always nice, who endures suffering, who isn't vengeful and wrathful, you can see how these teachings are in the Gospels, how they are in the Bible. It's more than just 
power of positivity. Just like it's more than just the law of attraction and just like it's more than just karma. The Christ-centered biblical teachings that the New Age is a oversimplification of are so much more powerful and so much deeper. What the New Age does is takes these oversimplified pop versions of these teachings and takes away the Christ focus and takes away the anchor and takes away praying. It takes away the anchor of Christ and, and, it, and it drifts you off into this new age belief that you're one with God and you're one with the universe and that you are your own God and that you manifest things. This is not what the Bible teaches. You should go with the Bible teachings. I'm going to read this one more time. All right, here's the whole thing, guys. Reap what you sow. Sow from spirit, not from flesh. Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Galatians 5, 19 through 23. Ask in prayer. Believe you have received it. Mark 11, 24. Power of positivity. No anxiety. Matthew 6, 31. Always rejoicing, Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice through suffering, Romans 5, 1 through 5. Always thankful, always rejoicing. Pray without ceasing, no evil for evil. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 through 18. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. Matthew 5, 5 through 12. So, those are the real teachings, my friends. Thinking that what goes around comes around, that's true. Keep it centered in Christ. Thinking that if you believe you will receive something, thinking that that's wrong, nothing wrong with it as long as you pray to God and ask God for it and you know that it comes from God. And then as far as positive affirmations and the power of positivity, nothing to worry about as long as you realize that all good things come from faith in Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and finish it by reading one more time. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's from Matthew 6, 31 through 34. I hope you understand the contents of this video, my friends. It's very important. Be positive. Fill your life with positivity. It's such a powerful thing. Be good to people. Let's go ahead and even one more thing. Galatians 5, 19 through 23. Let's just read the works of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Is it safe to say that positivity is at least up in there somewhere in the fruits of the Spirit? Absolutely. Be positive, my friends. Be good to people. Be good to yourself. Do not be afraid to fill your mind with positive affirmations, but always keep things Christ-centered. You are not your own God. You are not one with God. You are not one with the universe. God created you. God loves you. He wants you to succeed. Always keep things in perspective. Always remember that God is the Most High. All things through faith in Jesus Christ, my friends. Let's sow some positive fruits of the Spirit. God bless you.